All right. So um, my background's, uh, you know, as odd as it comes, right? I got a lot of tools. This is actually a, a thing that you can hang on and you can actually relax your back, uh, almost like um, uh, suspended yoga. I've okay. seen the little mini ones for the yes. neck. Right, That's right. Quite good. That release exactly. the tension in the neck. They look good. Yeah, I thought so it was all, some sort of strange outfit. Right. So you can actually, so instead of this being um, something that, you know, if you look online and, or, or people have images in the back now, you don't know, yeah. but you can actually, this is actually a swing, right? Ah, so, cool. Yeah, right. So you can, you can actually, you know, and then you can wrap yourself because it's a, like a cloth, right? You can wrap yourself inside of here. And Lily does cloth. this. My, right. Yeah, my daughter does this. Yeah, we so have a we'll enjoy that, right? You can you can do all kinds of exercise on this, and then the benefit is um, is you can also stretch out your arms as you get older, right? You know things things oftentimes get tight here. You can stretch mm -hmm. out your arms, or you can you know for men you can also do your you know your chin ups, right? So so this can allows you, you to to do all that here. Yeah. Go off and wonder, in a real bookshelf, right? You know, mm -hmm. a real real hand back here, um, you know. <laughs> And so, uh, so this is all real. Um, it's a setup that I do for when I do the shows and, uh, and, and various things because, mm -hmm. um, because I get to talk about, you know, uh, like for example, vibrations. This is, um, this is a device that you the can increase call. blood flow, but if oh. you put some Arnica on the location, it will also heal oh, the, cool. um, the, yeah, it, it will much better. You get that and then, uh, Example, this allows you to do, um, you know, you can actually exercise, you, pull, do, do, you can pull, ah. right? You can pull and then you can also do your curls this way, and right? There's all kinds of things that, you know, just sitting um, makes it a lot of fun. And for what we are doing, because, you know, we know that standing does affect the, um, does affect you. I could raise the table and then I could stand up, right? And uh, and then and then work with you while I'm standing. Um, yep. so all good. kinds of all kinds of tools um, that help. Um, you definitely know about mics because I, I saw on your your YouTube you're you're using an analog mic, right? That's right. It's a yeah. little yeah. Uh, I do when I do gigs, I use a Sennheiser radio mic. Um, hmm. so with the in-ears, it just works a lot better. And when I worked with the previous band, we had a few singers that used to sing in harmony. And you could mm. obviously get the mix in your ear right, you know, if you mm. wanted to hear your harmony. And right. it can use out a few of the, the uh, instruments and things. So I've kept with that. The Sennheiser seems to work, and it's a it's a nice mic to use in big venues, small venues. Um, but the little one on the tripod, um, I just saw it advertised, and it was one that Beyonce had used by matter of fact. And mm. it just works quite nicely because it's nice and easy. It's just an Apple Mac, a mic. A USB mic, plug it in, and away you go. It's so simple. Mm. Oh, okay, that's great. So, um, so I don't know if um, if I were to switch this over to where I can hear you, um, mm -hmm. it would if it would. Um, I can right now hear my own voice, um, mm -hmm. but if I fit it in, it might affect the video recording. So I I won't do that until I know for certain. Otherwise, it'll just be me talking to myself, and you'll be buried in here. So I'll leave it. I'll leave it alone. Um, we had. I sent you some songs. Um, yeah. Some of them you have. Um, I. I. You know the crazy was great. Um, that that was very meaningful for me. And I, we should start with that one then. You know, um, the lyrics of crazy. When when I'm when I use this therapy and guided imagery is, imagine your cells in your body. They stop listening to you. They've been mm -hmm. working their whole life. Like your liver hasn't stopped. Your 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 digestion system doesn't stop. Your heart doesn't stop. Um, and and when 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 you need to communicate with those cells, you you have to think about the structure. Did you know that that um, that your red blood cells, if you're if you have normal red blood cells, they live for 120 days, um, and then they go. Right. Oh. Yeah, there's a complete recycling after 120 days. So you think uh, in, in a year, you, your your blood cells get recycled three times roughly. I didn't know that. I just thought you had the same all the way through your life. Mm, no, you lose everything. Basically, after 120 days, you get another new set. Um, so 
obviously some that start at the 121st day and the 150th day, and they, they all have their own, you know, roughly, but on average, right, the lifespan of a normal red blood cell is 120 days. Um, and then in your immune system, your white blood cell on average is, you know, and there's very many types of red blood cells, is, um, is about three days. Is it? Yeah, three days. So, so when you're anemic, what is, it, what is that a lack of red or white blood cells? Well, anemic could be the definitely to do with red blood cells. Um, and it's the shape some, for some, some type of, like there's something called sickle cell anemia, where the shape is now, um, now uh, more like a sickle cell. Right, and then there's okay. other types of anemia where the iron that's inside the cell um, may have some malfunctioning. There's all kinds of anemias. Mm -hmm. uh, all we know that is the, is the red blood cell doesn't function as well as it should mm -hmm. um, because of some reasons. And then, uh, then you lead to the symptoms, which is you get tired, out of breath, other things like that. So, so um, but the lifespan definitely gets affected. See, uh -huh. yeah, the lifespan will not be 120 days. It could be 100 days, 90 days. So you, you get more recycling, um, but you also don't get to spend as much time with them. Mm. Right. And, and that's assuming every red blood cell is normal. And then mm -hmm. there's also something called angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. Okay. When the body can't get to somewhere, it, uh, it may form new blood vessels, or it may receive something stimulatory to generate new blood vessels. And what happens is you only have so much blood in your body based on your height, your weight, and you have, you, you have to, you have to use what you have. And mm -hmm. if you form new blood vessels, um, that is like more roads to go to the same place. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, some, some cells go that direction and some extra blood vessels actually don't connect to the oh. other side. So it's like a dead end. What mm -hmm. happens? Right, you have to turn around and go the other way, right? So you might have some of that going on. Varicose veins is a, is a vein where it has more extensions. Mm -hmm. And then you also have, um, you know, the, the arterioles and other things that could also do that. And cancers like to, um, they need food as well, and a different supply. And, mm -hmm. you know, to, for them to grow in a stealthy way, or if you treat them with chemotherapy, um, sometimes it can, it can lead to, more blood vessels being formed by them. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so so there's a reaction and a reactivity to things that happen in the body, mm -hmm. and then there's the music, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at music and you start looking at noise, sometimes um, you know some music is noisy, and some noise um, can have right. a pattern and beat that's somewhat like music, mm -hmm. and you even like have white right. noise. Yeah, you know, right, the shaft. Exactly. Right, exactly. You yeah, have white noise. You've, we've gone through iterations of um, G you know, uh, and the phone. So 2G, 3G, 4G, and now 5G, right? So does that affect anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's not um, extremely um, documented 100% because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like if someone said, um, prove to me that God exists. Right. And then, and then you could probably get by by just answering, prove to me that he doesn't. Right. Yeah. And you could, right. You don't have to then go and spend all the, 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 the whole lifetime proving because you still might not get an answer, but ask them and they spent their lifetime looking for that they can't really. So some things we cannot prove a hundred percent, including um, having children. So you have your baby, the first one, and then you say, I know everything what to do. But by the time you have your second one, they're different, you're different, right? And, uh, and so nothing may just simply apply, you know, it, it, there's some uh, observations, but sometimes you have to base it off of the observation as you see what's happening right in front of you at that moment. Mm -hmm. And if you wait until you get another child to, to run the experiment, um, it may not apply. Mm. Because things have been different now. So, so your mindset also changes. Second, um, second time, my mindset with Lily was so much more relaxed. Yeah. So we, we grow, as we grow older, we gain wisdom, right? We gain wisdom 
Um, we might even look at the lyrics in the song differently. And so if you look at that and look at the, the, the lyrics and then look at it from a cellular standpoint, that could dramatically change because at least when you do sing it, you're thinking of it, right? And it can vary from 100%, 90% to um, zero or 1%, but at least one is more than zero. And if you have only 1%, that you know that the blood blood cell lives three days and the red blood cell is 120 days on average, um, that when you're singing this, oh, I want to sing this more often because, oh, I just sang this three days ago. And then today, um, you know, the white blood cell that you sang to isn't there anymore. Mm. <laughs> right? So, so it's not like, oh, but I, I said, I love you. Uh, you know I love you. Well, no, you don't. Not all of me knows I that you love me because not all of me is here from three days ago. <laughs> so you know, gone. right? Gone, totally gone. They're gone. So, um, so when you think about that, and then you look at the tissues and and why Clark Kent, you know, Superman, and and the whole idea of the real movie star, why he had a hard time recovering, and nerves take a long time because they grow so slow. So. So red blood cells are good that they regenerate every 120 days. Especially in your head, apparently. Is that, yes. is that, is that correct, that your brain is the slowest to heal? Yeah, um, there's actually a lot of um, uh, things like your, you know, your brain is very slow, n nervous system is very slow, um, mm -hmm. but why, right? So for example, if you, um, if you hit your head and get, a, get, a, you know, get blood in there, it's mm -hmm. going to react a little bit differently than if you got a bruise in your arm. Mm -hmm. right? In your head, it's no good. They've got to drain it. Otherwise, it could lead to that entire area becoming a void. Mm -hmm. And in your arm, you bruise and it regenerates and you feel like it's fine. But is it? Mm -hmm. Is it 100%? What are we seeing anyway, right? You know, when we say we're, we're, we're better now, we're completely mm -hmm. recovered, we don't quite know. Um, for example, if you looked at the liver and looked at micro scarring, you start if you if you look for micro scarring, you start to see every time you get sick, you 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 scar your liver. Really? Yeah, every time. So then then you now may not look at getting sick as such a good thing. People said, oh, you know that's normal. Everybody gets sick, right? But every time you get sick, you scar your liver a little bit. Now, do the scars <laughs> heal? Do they go big? Are they are they macroscopic or are they micro? They're micro. Mm -hmm. So if you take a, uh, uh, you know, generally looking at something, you won't be able to see it. You've got to go deeper, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's there. Why does it scar the liver? Why that? Why particularly the liver and nowhere else? Um, well, you know, it can certainly scar the lungs, you know, too. Um, but the but the but the liver, if it's respiratory related, but the liver just has to clean everything, right? You know, it it the liver the liver makes cholesterol. Um, it cleans, uh, you know, that's why when, when, when the liver gets sick, right, the liver itself starts failing or gets uh, fatty, you mm -hmm. then start having things start going wrong. Like, you know, you, you, you eat something and you can't eat it anymore. Mm. Well, the liver keeps accumulating toxins. And if you look at any drug that you take, it says hepatic clearance versus, you know, uh, renal clearance and hepatic means liver. So the liver is necessary for you to take that dosage and so that you don't get your you don't get the um the the you don't you, you don't suddenly take it and then you drop on the floor right you, you you're able to clear it so that it breaks down and uh some medications just topical medication that you put on your skin it costs your liver 5.8 hours some mm -hmm. some cortisone medications right it will say it will say how long it takes for hepatic clearance it's that little insert that you get whenever you get prescription meds if you go in there and you look for hepatic clearance time you'll see how much it costs you now we're not calculating that just like if you if you live in a, a home you don't calculate you calculate how much you bought it for and how much you sell it for but you don't calculate what it costs to have that address yeah right yeah. that's a, those are property taxes right and sometimes, um, and it's not unheard of, that it may cost you 10% of the price of the home after, let's say, three, four, five years. It's possible, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. possible because if it's 2% taxes and you know you live there five years and you don't get that back, that's the right to live there. 
Yeah. And ten percent of what? That's the question you should ask. If it's ten percent of a million pounds, or it's a ten percent of ten million pounds, right? Mm. So, so it'll still have a bathroom, mm. it'll still have a kitchen, but it doesn't have anything more. Like it has nicer things, nicer features, and but it's still a bathroom and those types of things. So now you start thinking about your your body. Mm what do you have right in your body you've got you got your ribs you got your liver but you but you what what happens to your liver will determine how well or not well you feel mm. each time you get sick how quickly you get better and as you get older how angry you'll be really it affects yeah. your mood if your liver starts scarring more and more now you 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 can see that the liver is connected to the gallbladder and it's also connected to your pancreas. So they all share one highway. Mm -hmm. They all share something called the common bile duct. So everything ports in there. Mm -hmm. And if it gets clogged, then, then you get like this um, backup mm -hmm. and someone's not happy because if it's backing up to the gallbladder, then the gallbladder can't push the stuff in there. Or if the gallbladder is backed up, then, then it can't store the bile so well. And if you cut the gallbladder, now you can't store the bile, which is used to emulsify the fats, you know, so you can eat a fatty meal like a steak or something like that with some more fats, or even enjoy an avocado. If you're a vegetarian, you can, you can enjoy that without mm -hmm. any consequences because you, you need your bile. Now, fortunately, the liver makes the bile, but it makes it and then each time it has to use it. So if you can store it, then you could, you could really in, in go, you know, enjoy yourself, right? On a buffet or something, you know, eat lots of avocados and stuff like that. And it won't, it won't affect you or, or chug some oil in there and it'll be fine. So you see that they're all interrelated, mm. but it doesn't, we all start off, you know, with nice skin, right? When we're born, we're with nice skin. And then, I remember and then this. things start happening. Huh? Yeah. I remember yeah. this. <laughs> right, right. We all start off with good green. And then you say like, how come I can't get that skin back? All right. Um, and, and there's theories out there, there's skincare products that help you peel your skin and underneath you do find that it's better. Mm. Cause that's if you, right? Yeah. You get the glow and, and, you know, but how about asking the question that, um, you know, and I, I have a nice green, uh, lawn in the front of my house and a lot of people like that kind of stuff. So, um, it not only comes if I water my grass during the summertime. If I don't water it, browns up and things like that. But some grass, when I don't water it, stays green. Mm. They, have, they have been trained to have less water and there's green. So it's a different concept of looking at it is that what if I had thick skin? I didn't peel my skin all the time and it mm -hmm. still looked like a baby skin. How do you do that? Right. Exactly. That's, that's going to be a different path, right? Then, okay, I, I now know I can peel my skin. So first you need to know what's possible, right? And then with all the things that are out there. So you, that means you take care of your skin and your body. So you have to have, want to heal. And then, then to reach ultra. Mm. Ultra is where you start asking some serious questions, right? How do I, uh, how do I stress test um, my system because I, I know I'm going to be stress testing in the future anyway. As I get older, there are some sicknesses that could kill me. When I was younger and get them, I'm fine. Mm. Well, how do I how do I keep my liver? Here's a concept. How do you keep your liver when you're 50 to be more like your liver when you're 40 or 30? 20 year younger liver. You know? yeah, exactly. Does stress affect parts of your body like liver liver and things? Because when it happened with mum with a stroke. Mm. I, I became very ill and I passed out a, few, a couple of times and I was hospitalized. And the, the doctor actually said, stress does make you like this. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, it's the epilepsy again. And he said, no, it's not the epilepsy again. It's the fact that you're undergoing stress and your body's reacting to it. And right. this is the way that it's, you know, and I thought, I didn't realize that stress could affect you you physically like that i thought it was all mentally stress can kill you um yeah it can kill you it you you may a better way to look for it is to look for people who have had extreme emotional stress mm. um and then their hair turns gray yeah fairly quickly all right well that happened to my husband when i had the brain tumor he got oh. gray hair Oh, okay. So see, I'm, I'm speaking of things that see, and you see when, when we start chatting, I, I start chatting about, um, 
things that you can have relevant points to. Right? Yeah. You say, oh yeah, that's that's me, or that that person happened. If you talk about things that are not relevant, then it's a nice education. But that's about it. That's about it, right? So yeah. why song lyrics, right? Because song lyrics, like the song Crazy We're About to Do, it 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 it's been optimized. Right? It it's been built to speak like it's poetry, right? See, the difference between a fiction novel and poetry is that poetry is really succinct and short and gets to the point. But fiction novel, you got to read chapter after chapter, and then you get like, you know, <laughs> you get buried in there. So the difference between, right, um, uh, a song and reading Charles Dickens, I guess, right, you know, in the sense that, wow, you know, the words are just, they just hit the spot. And when you add in the music, there's something about how the words are put together. And I used that example when we first spoke about yesterday being used as an adverb and then also being used as a noun within the same the same phrase. I mean, that's clever, right? If you're like, noticing that, if you're paying did attention. They it? Did they mean to do it? Or was it was it just a, right. a happy incident? Right. But how many people, then if you ask the question, how many people did it after them, right? Yeah. After the Beatles, did they, did they do it again, right? And And if you're looking at a certain prism, right? And you're looking at it from, I want to be able to, be beautiful when I'm 90 years old, when I'm 70 years old, when I'm 85 years old. How do I achieve beauty when I'm older as opposed to beauty when I'm younger? Beauty when you're younger is doable. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has it. In the mind, though. Yeah, the mind affects it. The eyes. It, the I eyes can, affect I, it. Yeah, I can, look at, I can look at an older lady, hmm. but a neighbor comes to mind, and she's beautiful when you look at her eyes. The mm. beauty just radiates through, you know, she's yeah. got the wrinkles, she's got the right gray hair, but she's beautiful the way she speaks, the way she is, she's got her aura is beautiful and you just feel nice around her. And I that's think what that I want, one, right? That's what I believe everyone wants, right? How do yeah. you do that, right? How do you age yeah. gracefully yeah. as opposed to, you know, you age and you're, you're, you're decrepit or you're in a hump and things are drooping, right? How do you avoid that? How do you avoid your eyes hardening? Mm. Yeah, you could avoid your eyes from hardening. Do you know that your eyesight, if you have um, uh, nearsight, you need glasses. Uh, eventually, it peaks, and you don't keep getting, you know, uh, worse for most people statistically because you're, you know, you you become set, you become set. But That's if good. you take fish oils, right? Fish oils actually have the ability to keep this stuff because when you look at fish, if it's fresh, the eyes are glistening. Right? Mm. If you buy like you know, fish that's old, the eyes go and they're, they're not really right. So, so there's something about the oils in the fish that when we eat them, but this, here's the problem is that that's been talked about. People know that, mm -hmm. but then they left out all the other triggers. So here's how you go wrong. Did you have fish? Uh, this, this goes on Harvard too. And it, the survey says yes or no. So you put in yes and you, and, and people put in no, and you, you, you sort the two populations mm -hmm. and you start to see if something happened and then you publish that. And many people will read that and it'll affect everyone's you know, lifestyle because they believe in Harvard and well, all the research. But here's what's wrong is what fish did you have? Mm -hmm. The yes, right? The no, we know, okay, you don't eat fish, but the yes is that, is that if you eat tilapia, there's a difference between tilapia versus wild salmon. I've never heard of tilapia. I've ah, so that. that's that's good for you because tilapia is not very good. <laughs> you know, oh, good. It's not a very good fish. But you yeah. know, you know what I mean is that there are different grades of fish. Mm. Just mm. like there are different grades of diamonds. You know, people, people like diamonds. Oh, well, there's a difference between, right? You know, mm, a diamond with color. Yeah, she's not. Exactly. The diamond yeah. that I had, I haven't got my rings on, but the, the diamond that I got for my engagement ring. Tom said, I got, could have got you a massive diamond, but it wouldn't be as good quality as the one right. that you have. And exactly. exactly. Right. And then, and then how you cut the diamond, you know, how, how it is. There's many. So it's not just, uh, it's not just the type of fish. No. But also where the fish has been, how you cut the fish and how, meaning how you cook the fish, right? So how you cooked it, did you, did you, is it deep fried versus is it steamed? Or, you know, and is it if it's if it's made in a healthy way, mm -hmm. does it actually um, 
I mean, is it, is, is it, was it made healthy and eaten now, or was it from last week? Now, something that's healthy, but from last week, you know, no, that's terrible, yeah. right? We're not looking at all the parameters mm. when we're looking at a system. And then the next level would be, and going ultra means that you have to consider more parameters is what were the fish like growing up? Yeah. Right. What did the fish eat when they were growing up? Because now that's, you're eating the fish. That's another thing. If if the fish or the animal that was killed hmm. had or suffered stress, does that hmm. transpire onto you? Does that transfer onto a human that's eat, that eats it? Yes, but it, it depends does. on the human's condition. Ah. So every time you tolerate, you know, when they do the hepatic clearance, they ran it on a population study, hmm. and there, there, then there's a bell curve. Any, any of us who've gone to school know that, okay, here's the bell curve and we want to have a, a, everybody at, with B's and then you have your A's. You don't want everyone to have A's because, because then we can't sort people and they won't work hard. So we have them at B's, right? And then we have, we have the C's, D's, or you can set them at C's, right? So when we're setting up the ability to tolerate the medication or whatever it may be, and if they actually do the study and it says 5.8 hours, that might not be you. You might take seven. Okay. Right. And or if you have a lot of stress and other conditions and you're taking other things, you might be two days. You might be mm -hmm. two days slow. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're two days slow versus someone who's 5.8, then when something goes wrong, no, that's not possible because everybody's at 5.8. We tend to forget um, that there are some faster and slower that it's written, it's been built off of a bell curve. Exactly. Yeah. And forgetting that, right, becomes a problem is that is that if lyrics really affect us so much, and if the, you know, what the fish ate affects us, I'm sure the lyrics are closer to heart than what the fish ate, right? But if you, what you ate affects how you sing the song or how you interpret the song, who did that study? Well, there's a guy named David Rosenboom, a friend of mine. He's a, he's a professor at uh, California uh, Institute, uh, the, um, the Institute of Arts, right? So so the school of arts and they have a music school in there and what he did when he was younger is he wired your brain directly to musical instruments and then allowed you to um, play your song aut aut autonomously so you actually don't know what you're playing i wanted to run the experiment um because he did this in the 70s and then um and then and then we met in, in you know about 10 years ago. And, um, and I wanted to do based on what you ate, like if you had a, a coffee, right? And then you wired, would you play a different song? Probably, right? That would right, probably right, probably. So there's many other experiments you can run, which is based on um, uh, EEG. Um, and, um, and, e and EKG is for the muscles, EEG for the brain, and MRIs, fMRIs, and you could see that different areas of the brain light up mm -hmm. and different music can reach different areas of the brain. But I'm more interested in why does, um, why do, why do you have an acne? We all, all have had acne and why does it repeat in the same location based on some foods that you eat? Like mm -hmm. if you had a facial map, right. And you, you point it to a certain area, why does it come back? on that particular individual and everyone could have a face map. And I, I developed this face map years ago, uh, mm -hmm. 20 years ago on, on, Oh, look at this, right? You, you put on this medication or you eat a change a certain diet. And then, and then this stuff goes away, but some pimples don't and others do some mm -hmm. take longer and shorter, right? Shorter time. Mm -hmm. If, if music can be affected by what we, you know, how we are, where we're connecting, then, the foods that we eat and the things that affect us, some of them might affect even the creator of the song. So let's use something like Neil Diamond, right? Neil Diamond sings the song that, that, I, that I sent to you, Sweet Caroline, differently from when he started mm. to where he is now. Why does that happen, right? Right. And and if you're the if you're the originator of the song. I guess you're, and I read a lot, a lot about these and spoke to different musicians. Their entire goal is to keep raising the bar mm. because they're, they're the originator of the song so that nobody else can do it the way they can do it. Right. So, and they know yeah. the song. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Right. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, they don't want anyone copying them, do they? Right. So they want they want to do this in, in, in a different way and they want to be original. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're they're very sensitive, right? Mm -hmm. They're very someone who does a lot of songwriting and is able to see these things are sensitive. And then there was the schools of, um, of, of songs, just almost like if you were to, you know, people who did business, right? Business, and they did it well, they didn't need to go to a business school. Hmm. Because they did it differently, just like, you know, singing, if you're going to learn singing from the heart, it requires certain events to happen in your life. You had, my, you had a my, my, mom and, my mom and dad were very young when they married. Hmm. And and it was a very difficult relationship at first because they were so young. So for me, it was my escape to sing hmm. and oh. to do drama and that sort of thing. It was like an escapism for me. Hmm. And that's what I loved. So I get like it. I told, talked about before. Hmm. I could go off into my own little world. I could be that song in that moment. And I got very good at it. You know, as a child, you're very good and very quick at learning and picking up things like that. You live on emotions when you're a kid. Um, and I've always maintained that even now. And mm -hmm. returning to that when I was ill was the best mm -hmm. thing that I could have done. It just, it, it was natural to me to do that. I would have been devastated if I couldn't have remembered the songs or couldn't have sung again, because I think it would have broken me. It, it means mm -hmm. that much. You know, it's like um, it's like food. You need food to live. I right. need music to live. Mm. But I have to be in a good place to sing right, which is why recently when mum was being poorly, it's been very difficult for me to sing those songs in that place where I would sing them before because I, in the, emotionally I think of mum, you know, um, a lot of the songs remind me of mum dancing or mum singing them. So it's, it's you come from a different place, but you mm. have to be emotionally connected to that song to sing it correctly. Mm. Otherwise, there's no point doing it at all. Right, right. So, so for the um, for the song "Crazy," right? Because you mentioned that it connects, but now start connecting with your your body's cell structure, right? And imagine that right mm -hmm. what that will change how you how the song comes out the more you can do it the more you can change it right mm -hmm. so i have a show in asia and 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 i and i sang this song and i shared it with the audience and i said i'm going to imagine that you guys just come to me because you need me right now you're going to run into another doctor it's going to be better than me or you're going to get better yourself and you don't need me anymore so I'm going to th think of it this way. And, and I said, crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. So I'm, th I'm crazy for feeling so lonely because I'm in the United States and you guys are in Asia. Mm -hmm. This is crazy. I got, I got things to do here. I'm crazy, crazy for feeling so blue. I knew you'd love me as long as you wanted. And then someday you'd leave me for somebody new. Worry, why do I let myself worry? Wondering, what in the world did I do? Crazy for thinking my love could hold you. I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying and I'm crazy for loving you. Oh. So I did that. I want to oh, know what you think. <laughs> My son's clapping. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. That was yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. It's just from the heart and from the cells and, and, and sometimes my palms will get sweaty from, I, I have no idea that the sympathetic, which is the nervous system that overtakes it, it's the flight or fight. Um, and the parasympathetic is resting and digesting, right? And so, so I could do that and I could improve my digestion after a meal. That's crazy. That is yeah. crazy. Right? The, the song is crazy, right? And, and so, you know, 
and it need, it required someone I, I mean you go out there with all these you know all these accomplishments and and, and papers right and you start talking like this right yeah. <laughs> and the community right looks at it and says really you know and yet once upon a time when the laser was being invented we didn't know what to do with it. We didn't know that you could send signals um, and data through lasers, through light, and then you could record things and optics and and uh, you know and you didn't know that. No. Right. So we didn't leave the Stone Age because we ran out of stones. No. You right? moved on. And actually, I gave that that statement in uh, London. Mm. Um, I, I I had a talk there, and it was about. Um, it was it was you know the University of Manchester was there and others were there because I came to you know, United Kingdom because of the uh, the graphene I was working on. I looked at that. Yeah. I checked it out. <laughs> you checked it out. I checked, I checked it out. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. How that can be so light as a feather and so yes. yet so strong. Did you discover that then? I created the world's lightest, uh, 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 most inexpensive method to make this material. I am also the first one that was able to combine it with plastic so that you can recycle more plastic. And then some of the properties you get out of plastic is, is pretty amazing as far as, as a singer. I'll make it relevant for you. You could create a sound room um, with less material on the wall. Have without it, all the padding have, and everything. Right? Without all that, but you can you can absorb the sound better so that the difference between, you know, a USB mic and an analog mic is you could really feel like you're next to someone using graphene and plastic. Um, and that's the um that's the breakthrough. And and it was the belief that um a two-dimensional material could actually do that. Mm -hmm. I spent I spent a good over 10 years of my life on on this uh on chasing this thing down the holy grail that nobody nobody at the time thought this was valuable when i already had my medical background right i had all that and um and uh and people would say you have all this why would you go chasing this um pink elephant right and did you know that that in medicine see this is where time folds upon itself is that is that now I've never done this myself because I, I left the field um, to do other things and um, you know, to have my family and all that. But other doctors have gotten the graphene with the plastic mm. and they've started experimenting, especially uh, doctors in the UK, with how it can help you purge the plastic that you accumulate in your body. That's wild stuff, right? Because you know how much yeah. plastic we've eaten, uh, plastic bottles or things? And you know that some of it's lodged in your body, right? Well, right. they have found that it can help purge that. How? How, how, how could you remove that with a, a material? So, you, well, they, they, they do stuff with it. And then, and then people, um, it's almost like a vaccine uh, where you put the thing in there and you triggers the body to start looking for this stuff and then saying, we need to get rid of this. This doesn't belong to us. It's clever right. stuff. Yeah. So I would not have now where I took the graphene too, and this was in Portugal and when the, you guys didn't have the Brexit yet. And I was in Portugal and we attached the graphene, a different one. There were three graphenes I worked on one, which was graphite into graphene, the lowest cost process. Um, and then the second project was plastics with graphene, which more people didn't want to believe in. And the very last one is to liquefy the graphene so it can go into the nooks and crannies um, and can make, make the sponge. And that's what you saw as a flower, very, very lightweight. That's, okay. that's, that's the third one. That was the worst because nobody wanted to believe it. And, and I was in Japan. Uh, because they were very interested in using this to um, to absorb earthquakes, the, you know, the, the vibration effects of earthquakes. So, so my life, you know, those ten years were like Indiana and Jones, you know, in the sense that I would go on this search, right, to the core of the earth, to the far reaches of, you know, let's say the Sphinx, and asking these questions of, you know, why me why do i have this experience with this material and what could it do and every time i thought that i had figured it all out there would be another 10 things to figure out and mm. what this um liquefied graphene could do 
is that you could attach it to an antibody. And this is what happened in Portugal. Attach it to an antibody. The antibody knows to go to the cancer. It's been built that way. And so it brings the graphene there and then, and then you can um, vibrate the material and then burn off the cancer, cook the cancer. Wow. So that's secure. Yes, you can locally cook the cancer. And this was done in, um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a town called Arriero. Um, and uh, they were in the Institute of Nanotechnology. They were working on this. And uh, this lady researcher was just ahead of her time. See, so I only go and do these things and I have these ideas, but then there's these experts that their whole life has been spent doing what they do best. Just like mm -hmm. the plastic, this gentleman, his name is Thomas Nosker. And I mentioned him on the Ted talk because he's the one that inspired me to have children because I wasn't going to have kids. And he God. said, if you don't have kids, then, um, I said, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I think I controlled all the variables and, and we could have a good life without any kids. No, you need a real purpose. Right. So that's what he said. He said, you would, you would run out of, eventually you'll be bored. I said, but having kids, and I'm in the middle of the graphene, I said, could even ruin the project between us because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna change. And and because of how I am, this change is probably going to have you know consequences. And that's exactly what happened. He said, You have to have kids anyway. So so that's what happened. So he inspired me to do that, but his whole life has been making breakthroughs in plastics, which is why I contacted him. I said, You never worked on any graphene. But here I am, I have lots of graphene, all the graphene you want in the world. And back then graphene was worth a hundred million dollars for the thickness of a human hair. So if you have that much graphene, I had bags of it and I had buckets of it. And I had so much of it, it was flowing everywhere. Um, yeah, and it was amazing at the time. So I, I, is, is graphene being put to good use now? Or no. is it still in the labs and? No, no, because see what happens is, you know, you, you tell someone we're going to spend a trillion dollars to work on graphene, which is re really what happened, Manchester and you know, the, the Queen of England, right? So she's, uh, they're all into this, right? And, um, and you can get knighted too by working on graphene. So, so uh, become a sir, like Sir John Elton, you can become a sir along with him. And, and people just get very enamored by this and they kept working on it, but there's, the applications are far and few because there's still... Like, what if they could do another trillion dollars? Mm. Oh, what's the point of doing that? Money's invented, right? There is, it's just a storage of value that's a trust between everyone. But if you could get, if you could gain purpose or if you lose purpose, that's mm. when life becomes really hard, right? And you, you identified it right away. And, and, but, you know, in, in, in science, some of the things is you could get lost in there. Mm. And having my children saved me from doing that is that I started to think, I can't just think about myself. I have to think about what happens when I die. Yeah. And I thought about what happens when I die through, and I, that was the second TED talk, which was the inventing happiness is that if I die, this is what will happen. That all the things I had invented, the 31 patents, they won't respect my wife or my daughters. What do you know? Right? So so then they'll be treated as second class citizens. So I went on the journey starting in 2017 on how could I leave unnoticed, right? And it wouldn't affect anything. And after I leave, it's even better. So, so how, how do I do that, right? So, so I started accumulating real estate and things like that. I sold all my things. And you, you know, imagine doing your life a favor and you do a hard reset hmm. and, um, it feels leave. good. I mean, it, a life. The best thing you should do. And I went to high school. Our reset has been amazing. <laughs> right. Clearing clutter. Just, it's so right. good for your mind. It just makes you feel so, you go to the things straight away that you need rather than searching for them for and taking time to do things. And it clutters your mind just to right. have that. And they must have been great for your life reset. Um, well, I, you know, it was, I, 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 it's, I, I, I could, I could say that in five years, um, what had happened is I highly recommend it to everyone, you know, um, I, I don't regret doing it. I think that, that there's a time and window when it make and it's easier to do it. And when it's harder to do it, mm -hmm. um, when your kids are younger, it might be harder to do it because you got to like pay the bills and other things. But when your kids are older, there might be more bills. So it's all relative. I don't know the answer to this. I did it when my kids were one and three 
And it was so interesting for the Ted Foundation that they said, we want to, um, we want to give you a second appearance, right? To, uh, and if you watch it too, you see a totally different person. Mm -hmm. um, I had become a high school teacher for one year. And the students would say, you can't be the same person. I'm in textbooks, by the way. So when you study chemistry, they talk about graphene in textbooks now. So, and you go looking around there, you see these processes and you, you say, and they say, you can't be our teacher because- You're too qualified, um, overqualified. Well, they would say like, if you're successful, why would you teach us, right? If you're that person, why would you teach us? And what a horrible thing for them to think that way, right? Because Elton John's not going to teach singing and music class in school, right? He's not going to, it's a, right? You know, because what happens is we think of us, ourselves in our lifetime, and then we we then say, okay, whatever's left over, or I have weekends for my kids or something like that, or a few hours, but you're not, you know, the focus, right, shifts. And yet, as we get older, like when you get your 60s and 70s, you wake up every day and say, thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. that I, that you gave me another day, right? I mean, what a massive shift. How, how come it shifts like that? So I started asking a lot of people about this because I had that whole year as I was transitioning, I, was, I would ask the pastor, I would ask the lawyer, I would ask the criminal lawyer, the litigator, the barrister, and the solicitor. I would ask these different people in my life and I said, what do you think? And they thought I was crazy to ask that. They, they, they thought I had reached a deep depression because, you know, midlife crisis kind of thing. And I said, no, I actually was on a journey to search for things um, and, uh, and what exactly am I supposed to do? Um, with um... I knew when I knew what to do when I, ha I had my brain tumor and I was in intensive care and I, ha I told you about that that yeah. physical feeling that I got I knew then that my life's purpose was to enjoy my family my f the only people that mattered at that time were around my bed the only people that why, why I was stressing over other people and trying to impress other people when all the time it should be your own happiness that you bothered with. Right. I wanted to so badly to share what I felt when I was in that bed, never suffer fools again, you know, shit, work for charity. Uh, I wanted to go and do charity work in a hospice, but my friend, my family said I'd be too upset, you know, seeing people nearly passing, but that's the emotion, the kind of emotion it gave you. It was and very it similar. We all, we both had the similar consequence of uh, this second chance, right? The second yeah, it's like chance. A wake up call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A wake up call, an awakening, a second chance. And then how would you yeah. look at it? Right. And then it, it was really triggered by, you know, the, of course, when you run uh, businesses, you have a lot of cultural differences and, and, um, and things you have to go through with partners and things like that. Um, and, and looking at how vulnerable uh, my wife and my, my two daughters would become if um, we don't know what time of the hour when the sickness will arrive. And I, I wanted to change that vulnerability. And in doing that, uh, because I picked, um, you know, looking at their futures, I became that high school teacher that then looked at many other families mm. and their children. And they were the children that taught me. I lived in the private boarding school for that time. Um, and um, and I, I met nine 10th, 11th and 12th graders. So right up to the A level, right? You know, and then, so those four years and you, and, and because you're, you know, this was not high brain power stuff. So I would sit there and chat with them. And um, many of them, their parents had left them um, there to study so that they could go make the big dollars, right? You know, avoid, you know uh, quarantine the distraction. And then they and I said, well, how 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 young were you when they first started? Oh, I was four years old. So they've been they've been always wow. like you're right quarantined since they were four. And I did a survey one time to memorize everyone's name. I would ask questions, and um, and some of them. This was an international boarding school. Some some, some of them came from the UK, um, and um, and they were when they graduated, they were named by country. That's how many countries we had from you know different it, it wouldn't be africa it would be like different places in africa and so um so when they share with you that story and you have little kids right and my kids and my wife lived with me at the boarding school 
they need yeah, to. So never, that, you'll never get that time again. No, and so suddenly, suddenly I had a massive dose of fatherhood. Mm, oh my I gosh! Bet. I mean, what is what is it? Why am I? Why am I not prioritizing? So, so it wasn't. It, it it was it was the curiosity and trying to solve a problem for them as they grow older. And I was ahead of time, right? Because they're one and three years old. What are you doing? Uh, doing it so early, right? I wanted to check and I wanted to help other kids. And 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 one kid that I helped when I was his teacher, he got a million dollars in tenth grade, right? For for inventing, like you know, I invented it and then gave it to him. But normally, you know, if you're in a university, it goes through this whole process. You just give it to him, and then and then yeah. you know, it's not good for me. And it was turning eggshells into um, into uh, uh, a bone, like you know, a, 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 so calcium hey. carbonate into calcium yeah. phosphate yeah that's amazing my husband's just come back oh that's great <laughs> okay he's just looking after the dog <laughs> ah. yeah so so the songs right you know i'm on this i'm on this um surface and i and i need of course i need help because everyone knows music and then and then it comes to these types of songs and you say can you because what I noticed about your singing, and and I and I'm going to re-mention this here, because your song um, with um, a place in the sun, Stevie Wonder, is a song that my uh, a patient of mine picked to help her with her healing, That's and that tough. triggered me to see your cover, and then oh. for me to then read about all your covers, and I didn't actually do a bunch of background on you. Um, I only knew Sarah Collins and and here you see Sarah Durant. So I only saw those songs and then I said you and just based on your singing, I said you're really engaged. Really and the more I then looked at when after we communicated, oh, this is perfect. Had I oh. done the all the all the homework, but I didn't. I just based it off of that song and I and then and a few other ones. And I said, Wow, she's just singing from the heart. I'll tell you a little little story. Mm. My family are originally from Ireland. So my dad, mm. when I was a kid again, used to go to Irish clubs and bars and things like that. And at the end of the night, there'd always be a lady singing. And my dad, I can always remember saying, listen to this woman, listen to what she's singing. She's telling a story. And I would sit and listen to it, not just sing. I had to listen to the words because she was telling a story. And Irish music and Irish singers can really sing from the heart. They sing like it's their last song that would, they would ever sing in their life. And that always resonates with me um, because that was a big part of me growing up in music. So I've always felt that it would be a tragedy, tragedy not to sing like that. You Most know, people don't not, sing like that nowadays, right? No, they learn the shame. techniques. It's a yeah. shame, isn't it? Just to, you know, try and get, it's, it's a matter of just trying to get the listener in, in that moment with you. Not praise, not, not for praise, not for gratification, not for money, not for anything, just to move them. Because that's mm. what we are. We're all human beings. We're all the same, whether we have millions of pounds, whether we have nothing. You know, just to get them together. So it's, it's a togetherness is music, music for me, which is nice. It's the yeah. fact that you can have somebody from you know with nothing and somebody with with everything, mm. and we, we'll all enjoy that that song together. And that's that's so lovely. It's, that's why I like festivals. I love festivals and things like that. Mm. I think it's just a great moment when you all sing together. So um, let's let's have you sing. Um... Uh, I've never heard you sing Imagine. No, oh, I haven't sung that one before. No. No? <laughs> no. no? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But you know it. Uh, yes, I know a few lines of it. Okay. You don't you have to sing a lot that? of it. Yeah. I have to get in the mood. Right, okay. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine, I don't know the next word, sorry. I don't oh, know. That's the, all right. That's all right. Um, 
Yeah. So, so, so this, this is, you know, the guy, John Lennon was, was a very interesting because he, right. He was ahead of his time thinking, right, imagine if there are no barriers basically. Right. Um, and we could all share now, let me turn it into the cellular side. When we take a supplement into our body or we take food or any sustenance, there's a land grab. Mm. You give it to your white blood cell or your red blood cell, you give it to the liver or do you give it to the heart? And is there enough for the liver or is there too much for the heart? Ah, right. Right. Maybe it's too much for the heart, but not enough for the liver. Well, uh, because the liver has to function too. And how is it programmed when you eat the food? Mm. Was the kale put together with the um, X, Y, Z, or was there no kale and only X, Y and no Z and no kale? So the preparation of food, culinary art is also there's a whole thing behind the science and the art is that the is the message mm -hmm. if it's present in imagine by john lennon and it was present in crazy lyrics very different songs it's a totally different message genres. yeah right totally different totally different time period right yeah. so so do we do that with our food do we do that with our supplements when you write the formula for a supplement um, or our skincare, are you thinking of it like writing a song? Mm -hmm. And if you filter that and the answer is no, 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 then, but we put that in our body, right? Yeah. When you cook for someone, you're cooking with love or are you actually doing it because it's a job? Yeah. And does it make you feel different when you eat it, right? Is there yeah, something? It's like mom's foods always made with love and right. it makes you feel good. Right grandma's yeah. cooking right you know you think of grandma because grandma now is no longer mom could have been you know had stress moments and then, but once mom becomes grandma it's all good now right so, yeah, so exactly. isn't that amazing right it's amazing just like every baby's skin has a higher um statistical chance of it being better right so if we could help because these formulas aren't written well um, unless we rate change the formulas, but if they're not written well, but we somehow share with the bodies that imagine there's no barriers mm -hmm. and we could all, you know, only take what you need, right? Because if you take more than what you need, then someone in the cell in the body is not going to be happy. Right. Okay. So let's try that. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit. This is imagine there's no heaven. It's easy. If you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. You imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion to imagine all the people living life in peace you who you may say i'm a dreamer but i'm not the only one i hope someday you will join us and the world will be as one so i'm thinking thing. right i'm thinking of the yeah, cells right did it did it did it did it sound all right it sounded great it sounded oh. great because you 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 you're thinking what you're saying yeah you're believing what you're you're saying and you can tell that it's not just you're not just thinking this note comes next this note comes next it, you're thinking about what you're singing and that and came I'm across thinking, well, well yeah. how did that how does that work like you know because now that i know you're irish and you know the background and Thomas Nosker, by the way, the professor, he he's Irish and he brought me to my first Irish pub when we were working on graphene. Um, and so I, I, I you know, th that's, that's, that's the last place you'd imagine, you know, people, you know, music right? is in the blood in, in the oh, Irish wow. music wow. is in the blood. They've been brought, brought up on, on music. Um, mm. you know, Mm. I don't drink, but obviously drink goes hand in hand with them singing. It music. helps because actually drinking releases your, in a, you know, in, in your and things that are inhibiting. Right. So, right. so it's going to make you looser. Right. That's and right. Then, yeah. yeah. 
like Irish folk songs. If you if you if you listen to Irish folk songs and things like that, they're just so beautiful. The words are so beautiful. Mm. Um, I, and you know, Dad used to play a lot of, the, of that, like Danny Boy and and things mm. like that. They're just wow. the, the lovely songs. But I can look at somebody, whether them be a first grade singer that does all the trills and the frills, and mm. and I can either believe them or not believe them. I've been to shows before where there's been a band that have getting paid a lot of mon- money to entertain, but they do not cross that barrier of stage and audience. So you mm. just uh, look looking at a band that can sing and you just don't feel moved at all. Uh, not for me, I don't, I don't feel moved. I have to be, I have to feel connected with that singer and believe wow. what singing. If I don't, if I don't feel, you know, like I'm connected to the singer, I can't believe anything that's coming out of the mouth. And that's the way I've been brought up, really. Hmm. See, Josh Groban, right? He sang that you were talking about Irish and I was typing it in and, you know, he sang the song, You Raise Me Up. Oh, yeah, that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. I've, and, I've, and you know, I've done Irish songs as well. Um, yeah. I can't um, remember which um ones have so Sarah Collins you see Imagine Collins- there was a filter to filter out people who are in Ireland when they sing Amazing Grace right oh, you know yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you sing it right you know and what does it mean to you right and I view what's happened to me um because the graphene was very overpowering people read that and say well how did you how do you leave that and recently That's- I've been asked to go back in you know this was yeah. really strange you know after our conversation um, which was Wednesday, I received a call saying, would you come back in? Right. From a different, a different group altogether, a different group. And they, you know, what makes the story interesting is they're not interested in the first thing we talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, they're interested in the plastic part, but they're, they're, there's increasing evidence of, um, of the third one that nobody wanted is actually the most valuable. The, mm-hmm. the one that goes to the liquid. And isn't that funny? You know, what that would make a nice story in the sense that, oh, yeah, you know, but they don't need me to spend that much time into it like I used to. I, I used to travel. My oldest daughter went to 11 countries um, and, um, and on her passport, right? Yeah, on the but she will not knew where she were, was. Um, well, she was she was less than one years old, and up to I think up to about one, uh, two around that time period, she was still traveling. Um, yep, definitely traveling. It was it was twenty fourteen she was born, so she, we traveled through twenty sixteen. So for her first two years of life, um, are you glad that you would had that moment though? It was nice, but it doesn't help them if they're seven and dad's doing that, right? If dad's doing that and they're seven, it, it affects their lives and things like that. So are you thinking about their perspective or you only have your hat on, right? So so that that's what I notice with songs and lyrics. If you let yourself go into the lyrics and you start communicating with yourselves, right? Then you start thinking about, now that you know they have different lifespans. Um, so you're thinking like, I didn't, oh, I didn't talk to you today right i didn't talk to you either right and i've just been so busy and the 24 hours go by Mm -hmm. and even when i'm about to put myself to sleep i don't talk to myself my cells and then how are you supposed to get healing they don't know when's the last time they heard you talking to them never right or 10 years goes by you didn't talk you could have grays in your hair you could have grays in your underarm and yet you won't know it because you haven't looked right so it's like like right we don't look at ourselves we don't give ourselves that time. No. And it's not, it's not until you have a scare with a health issue or you realize that death is so close yeah. that you then start thinking, I, I haven't got... The, one of the things that I thought mainly when, when I was ill, I have, I'm not being married yet. I want to marry my, the love of my life. Mm. And that was a big thing for me. And I want to look after and bring up my children. She was only eight weeks old. So when mm. I was lying in intensive care, I can remember thinking those things. So for me, they are the most important, the utmost important, not um, impressing other people, competing mm. with other people, rushing round. And I put um, a Facebook post up uh, shortly after, because I, I got into Pilates after I had the brain tumor, because that was a sense of time for me. And we live in the countryside. 
And I would never look out the window and take in the bunnies in the garden or the, the robins that come and sit, sit on the tree. And after I'd had this, you know, uh, accident. Event, right? <laughs> this is yeah, an event in your quite life. Quite a big yes. event. Yeah. I'd start noticing the little things, the, the little things that I'd, I would never have time for. I was rush, rush, rush. Oh, I'm here, I'm there, I'm meeting up with friends, I'm doing this. I would never have time for me and that self, it, it's kind of a self-indulgence, indul but it makes you a better person. And then if you're a better person, that then transfers onto your children. And then, right. you bring, yeah. So, so, you know, the mind-body connection with Pilates, right? You know, the mind-body, but now we're talking about mind-cellular connection. And then from the cells, build back up to the tissue. Is that is that this other song we talked about, um, uh, which is Elton John, right? Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Mm -hmm. The the cell had a choice to mm -hmm. um, to stay as a stem cell and become something else, um, mm -hmm. or it became your liver cell, or it became your nerve cell. Now it's committed. Um, your ovaries, uh, all the eggs were formed, um, and then. And then, and as you get older, uh, and when you have your first mens mens menses, uh, the first egg gets released, but all of them are there and they get, yeah. you know, yeah. If you didn't know, and so, so, so they're all there. So, which is why as you get older, um, the, you know, the, the eggs, um, are also get older because they were there in the beginning and defects could happen or they don't have to, uh, there's, then it's all about chances, but mm -hmm. do the eggs know? what happened mm. like they don't they can't speak or they, they don't they don't communicate the same way but cells communicate otherwise how can i move my thumb right I, I focus on i don't have to tell my thumb to move my thumb but have a stroke and now you really have to work on getting that connection back One has to look at things to right. get them to move she yeah. can't she can't not be looking at the limb that she needs to move she needs to look at it right the okay. connection right the connection so we know that certain connectivities happen but then if you're if you're, all your eggs are made, then um, and cells talk to one another, then um, are they observant, right? Mm. Are they observant? They don't need eyes. They're not like us, but are they, can they feel the environments that we are in? And mm. will they tell your your children if you have them later about things? Now you you will probably start noticing this if you start paying attention to what I just you know talked about as a, as an observation. Having children later, sometimes the children will do certain things that nature tends to protect us, right? Just like you have long necked giraffes and suddenly you have some short necks. Well, why? Because maybe you run out all the food on the long necks, right? And then you still have food on the base. Um, maybe you need to run faster or something. Nature will keep protecting us. And if we look at what we tend to do is we tend to um take an entire population and have them do all the same things in it as a generation right and as a generation this is what we're doing this is the industrial age so we have to do the industrial things and every now and then there will be an outlier mm. um and and recently because of the pesticides and things like that we've created a lot of outliers that are um in the adhd category attention yeah. deficit disorder right yeah this has been yeah. so yeah yeah but this so is protective in a good way right Massive creativity. If it's not interesting, um, you should zone out. That's actually good, right? I mean, if it's not interesting, zone out, right? <laughs> right. The problem is the problem. The controversial part of it is how how do you know what's interesting, right? You haven't gained all your knowledge yet, so you have to put the knowledge in. So there is a blend between you know maybe you don't think anything's interesting when you're younger. You want to just do everything, but but your younger self does have certain qualities to it that we tend to put away in the box and had mm -hmm. we listened to that younger self we may have healed things differently we may have um learned things differently and like you were describing um singing from the heart so so say a cell has committed itself from a stem cell into becoming something and now they're stuck mm -hmm. goodbye yellow brick road is a way to talk to that cell and to say you know I know you can't, you're not happy with me. I know, I know you're not happy with me. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but I'd like you to give me a second chance. I'd like you to stick around, right? And not turn against me. Because it's a little strange song, right? In the sense that it says, 
When <laughs> are you going to come down, right? You start, you start saying, when are you kind of come down, right? When are you going to land? And then the cell, I should have stayed in the farm. I should have listened to my old man, right? I should have listened to my old man, meaning like the original cell. I, I should have done nothing. I shouldn't even been born. I should have aborted myself. But now I'm stuck in this life and I got to go make the money. I got to pay the bills. I got to pay the bills. There's so many bills. You know, it, it, you know, the, you don't have to think of it. There's other cells that will think of that. Yeah. Yeah. It takes over. That yeah. sort of thinking just takes over. Doesn't have you done Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? You've done some Elton John, but I haven't I've heard done, your... I've done Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, but oh. um, like a, what's it, Sarah Bar Bar Barelis oh. um, version. I've done that, oh. but oh. I actually prefer the Elton John version. It's the oh. lyrics, you see, but the Sarah, I'm just going to try to find it now for you. Mm. Um, you got so many that, that it was like... Uh, 995, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's by Sarah, Sarah Burp. I don't know how you pronounce it. Mm. Burp. Oh, it's okay. Please send that one to me. I'd love to oh, yeah. uh, listen to that. It's, it's yeah. a beautiful song. Huh. Um, but the lyrics again, it was one that was requested. It was a song oh. that was requested by a fan um, in America because the words mean so much to him and his mm. wife. Um, and it just touches, you know, they, they connect. Um, and that's the thing about um, reading, like you got, you got books that you can now listen to, but, um, but, the, but there's something about lyrics in a song being so succinct and then combining with the music, and then if it, and the missing piece is your voice. It mm. has to be your voice. Um, and, and so nobody's teaching this right now because no. they, they always say, oh, okay, let's listen to the best singer or uh, other people's versions of it. But, but if you had your own, you can do it in the shower, you can do it at bed. And if there was a way to block out all signals when you do this, now we can't block out all signals because there's constant, like if your phone didn't work, when you go inside this thing, it didn't work and you could actually block all the signals, the amount of signals generated from your mouth and your voice and your ideas would, would all could be completely absorbed by your, your body. You, you would increase that a lot, um, right? Because you're competing with, right? Even when I'm, I have this analog mic and you have yours, yeah. I'm still competing with the internet and sending the signal over, right? But imagine if your cell in your ovaries, in your uterus, in, in, for men in your prostate, it could actually feel that vibration directly from, from you singing. And what would that do? If you also, would it help the medications that you're on? Would it do those things? Of course it would, it would because nobody's paying attention to that. Yeah, I, I know for a fact that it is it does work. And I, I'm no professor. I'm I don't I'm a, not a doctor, I don't know, but I know that it worked for me and it was so strong. Mm. The the way that I was so ill and the the way that I when I sang, I just felt so calm, so connected to the song. I was moved mm. by it. I knew that I was healing, I knew that I was getting better when I used to sing these songs right at the very beginning. So I just continued doing it and it was my, and it became my therapy. It was, mm. it was for me, but it, what was lovely then was then it had a knock on effect of helping others, but it's hard telling people that music heals and music helps and music creates happiness because they think, Oh, music's just a background thing. Or yeah, I sing along sometimes or I sing in the shower. Oh, I'm not a singer but it can help everybody, whether you're a singer or whether you're not a singer. If in you- fact, singers can't help you heal your body. You have to help your, you have, you, it's your voice. That's the key that goes in there. So did you sing Neil Diamond's um, um, Sweet Caroline? I did, yeah. You did, wow. Yeah, I think I did sing that. Um, and how about this one um, by Whitney Houston, One Moment in Time? I haven't sung that. Okay, yeah, because I know that's you can belt too. So that's could be, you know. That is a great song. Yeah. He's just a beautiful singer. Have you heard of a singer called Amy Winehouse? I've heard of the name. I, I you know, the more I do this, the more music I'm listening to, because I, I you know, with, you can only do so much. So I, I was very focused on the knowledge, but now I'm, I get to 
like the more people introduce songs to me, especially when I work with students, they, they share songs with me. Um, like one song is called perfect. Right. And, um, and then, and then as a consequence, I, it will be that yeah. one. Yeah. Perfect. Or you are the reason, right? I've now, I've now heard of these songs because of them in their generation, right? They will send it to me. And I said, wow, that's so beautiful. And then, and then I can apply that to the cells and heal. I mean, you think about why music communicates through different languages, different cultures, different ages, some things turn into classics. Mm -hmm. And um, in working with a couple of um, musicians, I've noticed that some of them should have been much sicker than they were. Um, usually people come to me because they have something going on. And then, and then I ask them and I, I do the study on their blood work. And we were able to find out that they used they should have been sicker than they are, but because of their profession and because they practice and they sing, it doesn't appear to be as bad or they can, they, on their symptoms, their symptoms are better than their blood work. When you do, when you do a gig mm. or you do a performance and it goes really well, it's mm. a natural high. It's like you feel euphoric. It makes wow. you euphoric. It's like a, the running. So you you get an endorphin kick, right? Absolutely. You know, okay. I when see. you do a gig and you you're and everybody's with you and they're in the audience and they get up and they're singing away with you, it's euphoric. It makes you feel euphoric and and you have that buzz and that buzz doesn't go away. And I had to try and control that buzz because I'm epileptic and I take the medication mm. to control the epilepsy. The mm. first few gigs that I did it was hard because it'd make me feel a bit jittery because everything was rushing around my body and, you know, I couldn't quite control it. But after a while I got used to that sort of, um, it's not, well, it is euphoric feeling, but it's a, an adrenaline rush um, because I'm doing something that I love and I'm seeing other people dance and sing along. Like the last gig that I did, um, a guy came from Coventry, which is down south, quite a few mm. miles away down in, in the UK. He brought mm. his blind wife with him because she's mm. such a fan of my singing. She's blind. Wow. And she wow. came along. And oh she my had. Gosh. Uh, and, and because she, it makes her feel so good when she hears my voice. Mm. She came and she danced. And she danced with her husband, which I thought was just beautiful. And she says, oh, I've, listened, I've listened to your voice. Now, if a blind person can listen to your voice and, and, and understand the story that you're trying to portray, that's, yeah, that's, that's great. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Or someone, let's say, because you can still feel um, the, the, the vibrations if they, were, if, they were, if they were deaf. Yeah. Right. If they could She's, also. Yeah. Yeah, she's not yeah, seeing yeah. me dance and not dance about and then the pretty dress that I'm wearing. She's not seeing any of that. She's right. just hearing the band and she's hearing my voice. And right. she, she's having such a fab, fabulous time. And I just thought that's amazing. It's so you know, you mentioned about um, um, uh, epilepsy and mm -hmm. then you look at, and you mentioned about the, the, the high when you, when you sing um, and the, and I mentioned about the dopamine and the endorphins. Well, if you start mm -hmm. looking at, a drug that's been approved by the FDA called Epidiolex. Mm. It comes from um, the cannabis plant. It's a CBD cannabidiol, right? Mm. Which is not the addictive. Um, this is, it's not THC. It doesn't give you the high. Mm. I'll write it down. Epidiolex. Yeah. Epidiolex. So it's just, it's just interesting to read that, that there's a plant that exists that comes up with a compound, but in order to obscure the compound, it also makes other things. And, and it used to be known as marijuana, which is why you had all this, all these um, problems with it because people, but why would you have so many problems? Because people gravitated it to it. And while we can't do the study and go back in time, but maybe some people were after the cannabidiol effects, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they would, they'd be willing to take the, take the dive, right? Because of the you know, if I, if it comes with this, it's fine. I need the cannabidiol. And nowadays we, we have the technology is separated and it's been, yeah. it's been approved. And then there's, but did you know that the, the one plant, the marijuana plant has 113 so far identified, um, um, sisters oh. and brothers of the CBD compound. Really? Yeah. Right. So, so if there's, if that alone, has that many 
Right, in one plant, right? We, we, we now know that there are, there are that many uh, cannabinoids inside. That's, that, that number can change, right? But this, this is what we know. And that one of them led to a whole pharmaceutical company coming up with this and it was FDA approved. There's so many things that we don't know. We used to think that our mouth has maybe a hundred bacteria. Now we know there's billions, different types, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's no laughing matter, but when I was, but when I was younger, uh, when I was in medicine, they, I had a project where, um, and I volunteered for it because it was so interesting, is to take someone else uh, who's healthy, take their fecal matter and transplant it into um, someone else who's sick. So you're taking the poop and putting it into someone else and saying, does that work? Now, I want you to look up and remember this word, fecal transplant, right? Fecal matter transplant, FMT. And if you look at fecal matter transplant, transplant then you will see that FMT is now a real thing. Um, you can, you can, you, you know, people who end up getting sick all the time, Johns Hopkins is a big leader in this area. Um, and you say, wow, it's called, it's also known a better word would be uh, bacterial therapy, right? As opposed to fecal matter transplant, but they're actually taking a stool from a healthy person and putting into after they treat it, um, you know, and basically they're washing with saline water um, and then putting into someone who's not healthy. And it works. It works. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like when you hear about people that drink their own urine. Yeah. I feel about that to make yeah, them feel. Yeah, well, the, the problem is, you know, the quality of the urine coming out of you versus you drinking it. And then, so what they've done is that they've taken the science and they've taken the, the, uh, the, 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 the folk, the, the, the myth, right? And you said, all right, you know what? The myth is not false. Mm. I mean, let me not negate everything. Let me not just say no. Let me have an open mind, but now let me apply the science to it. And here's what the science says is that, is that because of the food that we raise and we eat and, you know, and some people eat vegetarian because they think they solve the problem, but, um, but the vegetables also have insects eating them. So we use a lot of fertilizer and we use a lot of chemicals. And what happens is when you experience that, sometimes it kills off your bacteria. Mm. And yeah, but you said, well, I used to eat that stuff when I was younger, or I ate it when I last year and I was fine. And suddenly it just set off. Well, all it takes is a combination of stress, maybe a, a few sicknesses that were set up in sequence and then off you go and they're they're not willing to regenerate now and you have a digestive system full of uh, uh c difficile and this clostridium difficile is a is a bug that exists but when abundance what will happen is it'll lead to diarrhea camp cramping all kinds of things some people might suddenly become allergic to gluten right um and then they start having the celiac well, they do this test, right? And then, and then what happens is they notice that the C. difficile actually produces something very toxic, this bacteria. Mm. And then that toxicity really destroys the, um, the, 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 the absorption and, and, and other things going on. It's really nasty, right? Which is just not to go into the whole details of how it works, but it's well published, looking up fecal matter transplant, but this was 20 years ago when I was working on this. And, um, and I was ahead of the time, right? In the sense that this was, this would, this would become a therapy. Um, and my, a friend of mine who, um, he worked at the United Nations, he would ask, oh, what's your latest and greatest project? Because I was in medicine, they would be in finance or, or at the United Nations and, and ask me, and I would describe what I was doing. And they mm -hmm. said, you know, and you know how guys are, they would think it's, uh, you know, it's yeah. very funny, right? But, um, but this person, um, his name is Alex, he now is, um, he's the one who's working on the sleep lab. Without me, he on his own gravitated in the sleep because he has difficulty sleeping. So he, he formed this whole venture around sleeping and then he meets me and it re reconnect and, and I share with him, you know, the fecal matter transplant example, uh, you know, have you ever thought of blocking all the sound completely? And that doesn't mean sound and voices, but sound from all signals. Mm. And then try to sing to yourself, right? What would happen? He's, he, people like him, because they, you've given them time to transform, right? And they have that memory from before. Mm. That's what makes, you know, some of the work I do, 
Uh, and the graphene certainly helps because everyone now knows it's real. So, mm -hmm. so, um, and the graphene, when I describe how strong the signal it can block is that it can block, let's say you have, um, you have a, uh, a cell tower and you're trying to communicate or, or you have a bunch of troops and you're trying to communicate and there's a satellite telling you where things are going. So you're communicating through the, through the atmosphere of the earth. You fly a bunch of drones made of this graphene and plastic. And this is proven results and you, you, you block the entire signal. You're blind. Really? Yeah. So it can block that much capability. So if you surrounded yourself, like if you imagine if you just like created a blanket of this, right. And you just covered yourself with it. And then you just sang to yourself. I mean, it could be, it could be, um, and just a, a, the, the one moment in time, right. That's how we're talking about. Imagine if you had that one chance with someone with your voice, right. And your, your experience and you did that, right. What would happen? You, right? you would tell, right? Is there any, is there any cancer left? Is there any, let's not call it cancer because that's when they turn, they turn against you. But if there's any cells out there, right? Is there any cells that are not, if we're not in alignment and we get maligned during the day, right? Just like, you know, we know chiropractic, you know, there's, there's a whole field. People adjust because they have, but I have always asked the chiropractor, what if you didn't adjust properly? How do you know that I needed to do this, right? Or should you have done this, right? How do you, how do you know? You don't. They said, well, we don't. And I said, well, can you, we, they just basically go through and do everything, right? And I said, well, let's say you didn't do it right. Could you, could you undo it? No, they can't, they can't un, un, unadjust, right? There's no unadjustment. So, mm -hmm. so that's what happens when you have the therapies and science, but you can sing a different song. Mm -hmm. You oh. can in, engage deeply and improve your engagement as nobody else needs to know about this. And that's what makes what we are working on so um, profound is that we, you and I may have, um, you, you're a witness of this, but we may be on the brink of something bigger than graphene in the sense that if, if you're an astronaut in outer space and NASA is interested in stuff like this, because if you're, if you're up there, and you suddenly start to get um, um, really lost. You have no friends. You're you're taught you 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 look around and you see the Earth, the whole Earth from the other side. And and um, and what if you suddenly mentally get sick? You know, yeah, that's, that's a scary thought. Right. But, but that that's that that is. You know, I just shared with you something that could really happen. Right. You know, you look at that. Yeah. And so your cells, they're flowing through, they're waiting for supply because um, they don't get the, the drop, the, 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 the meals drop to them unless the blood gets to them. Mm. And, you know, you've worked for this person your whole life and suddenly the, 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 the resources are getting scarce. It's almost like Napoleon, right, going into Russia and he's waging battle, but he doesn't bring enough food. He doesn't know about the winter that's coming. Well, that's I'm describing aging, right? And aging, as you age, things happen, and you might lose communication. Mm -hmm. But it takes a song to move that, and you can also apply massage to that area while you're singing to it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, say you recorded the voice, your voice, and you allowed your baby to hear it, but in a much reduced way. You remove some of the things, and it's just. It comes down to your heartbeat and your voice. Did you know that your baby listening to your heartbeat calms them from the colicky and all that? Can no. you record your can you record your heartbeat mimicked while you're singing a song, but only focus on your heartbeat and then record mm -hmm. that? This is what I think that um, some of the um, the medicines. Um, it's not new age. It's space age medicine. Is it mm -hmm. taking it to that level of we can't have we can't be dealing with all these side effects. We can't be dealing with the costs and we cannot just look at one single parameter anymore because singular parameters harm people, mm. right? Um, if I, should I eat egg yolks? Well, egg yolks have cholesterol. We know that. So, so once upon a time, it says, don't, don't eat egg yolks. And then, and then you can only eat egg whites, right? You, you've, you've seen that when people order food and all. Okay. And then later on, the studies came out that you should have lots of egg yolks because mm. you need the cholesterol because your liver will not um 
the liver makes the cholesterol. So if you're taking in more cholesterol, sometimes the liver may make less cholesterol. And if you cut it all out, doesn't mean that it'll stop making it. It'll just make it or make more of it. So, so then are both right? And mm. let's look at the data. The data shows that um, both are right. Both are right because what, what, what happened was one group was looking at it in one way and the other one was looking at it another way, kind of like the yes, no on fishes, mm -hmm. is, that, is that it depends on your liver and your conditions yeah. of your body. And, and everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. If you, and if you don't ask your, and even you are different from your former self. Mm -hmm. So if you don't check, right? If you don't check and look at those and know to look at those parameters before you answer the question, you may be answering the wrong question, mm -hmm. right? It may be that. And why are so many people having a fatty liver? It used to be thought that it's because you drink. So alcohol induced fatty liver. And now we know that there's something called non-alcohol fatty Fast liver. Liver. Yeah. Non-alcohol fatty liver disease. It's now known as a disease that when your liver gets fatty, um, but what's the trigger, right? Non-alcohol could be triggered by hepatitis. It could be triggered by hepatitis. And no one was looking at this, but the um, health department in Hong Kong, um, they were, uh, you know, when you have scallops, you know, seafood scallops, mm -hmm. um, in the Asian diet, they, they, you know, they, they, they don't want to waste anything. So in a scallop, there's actually little pieces out there. And if you, um, if you include that, it's like a bigger meal, right? And if you don't cook it fully, then, then that's, that's, um, that's tastier. And you know, oftentimes we eat like raw oysters and things like that. Well, it turns out the percentage of getting a hepatitis from doing that is very high. Cookie yeah. scallops. Yeah, uh, 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 the, 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 the scallop, not the, not the, the big scallop in the middle, but the, yeah, the little, the little, the little stuff, the, 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 the stuff that's the protein that's around the scallop yeah. itself, you scoop that out and you, you know, you, you mix it up and, and, but if it's not fully cooked and because of the surface area that's inside of this, the, that, that, the, those, those proteins, you get a higher chance of getting the hepatitis and there's five types of hepatitis. There's A, B, C, D, and E. So, so that's the, that's the thing is that if we don't look at data no. and if we have a lot of data, but we don't know how to analyze the data, mm -hmm. it's useless, then, right? Yeah. It's, it's just a lot of information, right? So, mm -hmm. so you have to look at these patterns and you look at these trends and then what the data sets are showing with music is that, is that it has the ability to protect you from certain things um, that, that otherwise would have infected you. Well, like, I can't understand why I didn't die because the, the, mm. the tumor itself was the size of a satsuma. Mm. It wasn't cancerous, but it was yeah. here at the front of my head. And when I looked at the scan, mm. once one quarter of my brain was the tumor. How did I not die? Was that because I, I, I've been a musician most of my life? Is it because... I had some sort of protection there. You had protection I, for sure. I Why? How did the protection work? Right? You know, and a exactly musician. How, exactly. How did I not bleed to death? Right. How did I not have? It was pressing on a main artery, apparently, um, up in the bedroom. So I was there from nine till five. I told you this on Wednesday. So I was laid there from nine till five. How mm. did I not have a brain bleed and just die? Right. How, How is that possible? Right. And, and then at the same time, people say that we don't use uh, all of our brain, right? So mm -hmm. most of our brain isn't used. And that's an easy statement to just uh, not think much about it, but your brain, brain repeats itself. There's a lot of repeating things. You are using all of it. It's just, there's a lot of repeat. So maybe how you structured and you did the singing allowed you to also, because having all that pressure, how did you not lose certain capabilities, right? But yeah, you were tapping yeah, into that. your yeah. emotions. You know, when your heart hurts, like mm -hmm. when someone hurts you and says something really, you know, but they're very important. Uh, and they, they, yeah. Right. You feel that pain. Is that a nerve? It's not a nerve. There's no nerve. I asked for this in medical school. That was one of the questions I asked 20 plus years ago. Is that, is that a nerve? It's and it's not. not a nerve, but it hurts. Yeah. Doesn't isn't when you hurt your fingers, that's those are in your nervous system. How why does it hurt? Why does it throb, right? Why does it do that? Is pain a real thing? Pain is a real thing. 
But when it hurts, right? When it hurts like that, that's oh. massive cells dying. So your heart actually dies when, when you it's broken like that. You're really breaking down cells and they're dying and they're, and they're shaking, right? And then you're, if you keep doing that um, and you have to measure these patients, you some of them have uh, pinpricks on their fingers. Oh. I'm not sure if you've ever had a moment, right? Of where it hurts so much that you can't really think right. Your voice is shaking, right? Your, your hands are pin prickly, right? And it, you, you just like, what is going on? It's massive cell death, right? And now more people will understand this because we're in COVID. COVID gave mm -hmm. us a blessing that, okay, so it's invisible and it can hurt us, right? And it can get inside your lungs and then you can have a massive cascade response. And fortunately now it's not so bad. It doesn't kill you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, is it a Trojan horse setting us up for something really bad in the future? This or is it, you know, it depends on how deep you look at something. Yeah. You know that the H1, the H5N1, which was the bird flu, um, that is now H5N6. So that's still there. Oh, it's there. It's in the animals. It's in the geese. If you have any geese flying over, it's in their, yeah. it's in their fecal matter. So... Mm -hmm. If they drop and you got any chickens or things like that running around, they get infected. And then, then it has the ability to jump into humans. And back in November, 21 cases of tw November, 21, 21. So nobody talks about that unless you look for it. Right. Yeah. It's all there, right. It's all there. And no one would know today's this conversation unless they hear it. But if you hear it, you, you survived, also because you can now share this story. I would be incomplete without your story, with other stories. And so what I set up in, in Hong Kong is that if you're gonna listen to, um, if you have a question to ask me, and if you're gonna listen to the question, you have to listen to other people's questions too. Mm -hmm. So we now have like, just this Wednesday, 600 people who stayed up until 1230 at night listening to each other's questions, right? Because yeah, you might not even get your question answered. And so every week I go through this, right? And if we could explore this, if we could call all other people who have had any engagement in music and sickness, we created a filter like that and said, calling all of you, let's go on this exploration journey. We might be able to figure something out for the human race. That would be cool. Because people sing the plants, right? And it does change how they respond. Yeah. There's, there's messages there's like that out there. There, there was a, um, a video on my that popped up on my phone recently, mm. and it was a lady playing a double bass mm. in a field with an antelope behind, and they mm. all came over. And it, it, to me, that they must feel it. They must feel the music like we do. For definite, there's something there. Well, you could move Ireland, right? Because if uh, if apparently if the people already understand that from their history, right? There's a greater chance of it, and and why does the 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 character for music and the character for medicine have so many connections, right? Why does it have that in the Chinese language, right? You know, that is very very peculiar. That's different races and different time periods, and you know, we don't have the chance to ask the Mayans or things like that. But but it but why do these things? And then and then of course gospel music. Why why is it? that it can move and, and and why does it make a difference if you're a believer versus if you're a non-believer why is it why is it can it be measured and, and if we can push those limits uh to, because measuring someone by them telling how they feel is not the same measurement as as fixing curing or reducing certain symptoms and sicknesses you start doing that right now it's relevant to people because everybody has some level of complication something something's wrong right some the, the number of Perfect. wrong things that this show has attracted right mm -hmm. one person had uh something called Meniere's disease which is the um the ear starts acting you know funny and mm -hmm. i also ran into this because i've been doing a lot of this with uh singers and musicians so i had to put an in the ear and one day i left it in and then the next day i woke up and it was clicking mm -hmm. only my left ear was clicking um, and I would ask um, doctors about this. I got looked at, they put an MRI and, and you know, all that stuff and they couldn't find anything. 
They didn't, knew that it wasn't a tumor. And at first they thought it was just tinnitus ringing in the ears. And I said, no, it, well, it's not, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it only happens when I turn on the faucet and flush the toilet. It only happens with some bass and it'll click, 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 right? And if I don't share that, if I, if I, I act like I, I, I don't get sick, right? Then, mm -hmm. then there's no sharing. It's sharing means we both share about the things that happen to us, right? And, and, and then, and then with the combination of what I was working with the fishermen and other things is I took the fish oil mm -hmm. and I spoke to a doctor who said, maybe it might be the hammer that's inside between your, your eardrum and the other thing. Sometimes it gets stuck. There's a possibility. And she had to think way out of the box because she also is perceptive to some things. And so I took a larger dose of the fish oil and it what went away. What fish oil do you take? Do you take what fish oil do you take? Omega six, three, six, so, and nine. So this one, you know, this one you asked is this was made on the show. Um, I taught people what the fish oil was and and why fish are getting poisoned. So confident.nature's fish oil, which is it should, here is there there's a sign that says the fish will never go above three pounds mm -hmm. so you put a constraint on it it's a three pound um doesn't go above three pound type of fish it also contains uh red algae seaweed which makes the krill red um but it it's the it's just from the plant a red algae we combine that with vitamin d3 and k2 now no one's ever written that song before if you look at it as a song, no one's ever written that piece. Um, the audience wrote it. We had hundreds of brains talked about what's important. And then someone says, because originally there wasn't going to be any K2, because I said, you know, it's okay. They wanted it. I listened, we put it in there and here we go. We have, we now have this formulation um, calculated and based off and there's fishermen with a thousand boats out there catching this particular kind of fish. It doesn't go over three pounds. So, yeah. So, so on the other side of the world, right, located far away from Japan, where the radiation is, the fish are wild, so they're not farmed. Mm -hmm. So, what would happen if you know, just like was talking, right? And we start going into these data sets and saying, how does it affect us? What would happen? Mm -hmm. It would start changing. It would start filtering people who want to listen to this, and then they would take your songs and sing it for themselves, right? And then we could start discovering that. First of all, they'll listen to your song. But more importantly is that they'll they'll start sharing. What I don't want is you to keep it to yourself after you've done this. Share what happened. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is if you had the fish oil and you had something um, happen to you, um, share it. So for me and this other person, Meniere's disease, it improved and it went away. And another person who has... Um, who has um, uh, the, um, the hair? Hair wasn't 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 shiny, and it was it was also a spot where it was it didn't grow well, it was very thinning, and it all normalized again from the fish oil. Mm -hmm. I said, "Are you sharing that? Yeah. Right? Are it's, you sharing that? Right? Are yeah. you sharing that? And yeah. where are you sharing that? They share it on my Facebook. I said that's not good because if you mm -hmm. share on my Facebook, Facebook is closed. You have to be my friend to see it. Um, why don't you share it on the TED Talk? Why don't we share it everywhere? You gotta, you gotta share these things because I don't know how long I'm gonna, I'm gonna be around. So the crazy song is what triggered this. In May, around my birthday, mm -hmm. I called my, I told everyone, you shouldn't come back anymore. Don't listen to this because I'm about to talk about crazy things. I wanted to just get rid of anybody who was a non-believer, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like the John Lennon song, you gotta be a believer. And I put on the wig and I called myself Dr. Crazy. So Dr. Crazy was born in May of 2021, mm -hmm. because some of the stuff we talk about, like Ireland being more, 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 more connected to the songs and speak, singing from the heart, isn't that crazy talk? And yet, it's 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 um, it's legendary, right? At the same time, it's it true. Is. It is. It's the way. You yeah. see my hair that it's like shiny. I don't put anything on it, and yeah. it's and it you by and if you give dogs and pets um you know, the, the, the fish oils, it, it contains this omega-3 in there that allows you to, now the problem is it's not just omega-3, we use whole fish. So we use whole fish and we're not just taking the liver from the fish or the fish aren't big enough to do that. And then because I wrote it like this, 
I can never go back on what I wrote because it's written. So once you set the data sets, even I'm constrained. So constraints are good, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you can constrain in a healthy way and you can build a community that somehow they all believe in some things, but they're, but they're scattered, they're fragmented. What is the power of everyone together, different languages and different things, and just talking about something that costs nothing? It really costs nothing. Right? Exactly, that everybody yeah. can get to. Now, I'll share you, with you something really peculiar that happened with the fish oil that was never, ever thought about. And this is now being part of a case study that we're studying, we're, we're being looked at, is that after sharing the formula and people contributing to doing this, is they all ordered the fish oil before the fish oil existed. This bottle did not exist on earth um, a couple months ago and or last year. And, and what happens is um, they created it and they paid for it, they ordered it. And my actress friend, she didn't have to do anything. It wasn't like you had to then build a business where you have to buy the fish oil ahead of time and then find out a way to sell it to you and do all this marketing. Didn't have to do any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so imagine if we didn't have to have a middle person is that you could just directly learn about the knowledge. There's no middle person. You just take care of yourself. And we, and then what happens to the middle people? Well, they don't, they don't, they don't go and become middle people. Imagine if there were no middle people in the world where everything becomes more expensive. We're just directly helping each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot, a lot nicer place. A nicer place. Right. So we want a nicer place. And, and is it because things are not so nice now that that's why there's more sicknesses. It could be, could it's be, the, right? corruption, the corruption. I, I do not listen to the news on the TV anymore because I find it brainwashing. So yeah. I turn the TV off. So when the rules are being spat out about what to do, I turn it off. I won't I see a patient unless it's two hours long. Hmm. So I, I have a rule. So, so that way, because I can't see anything, if we have to go through everything, I go, you know, because I treat it like a crime scene. I described it on the show. It's like a crime scene. And when you're sick, it's a crime scene. Everything is a suspect, yeah. right? Everybody's a suspect. Why yeah. would you say that, you know, <laughs> that, that, that didn't have anything to do with it. You can't, you can't say that if your foot hurts, it could be related to your blood, your heart, you know, your immune system. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it could is. be. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. I love this. Um, uh, yeah, this was, this was really, um, if you enjoyed this, we can keep building on it. Yeah, definitely. And I'll definitely. send you a copy of our recording. That way you have it. I do. Absolutely. I do. That'd be great. Thank you for meeting Sarah. Oh, you're I'm very gonna, welcome. With your permission, I'm going to share, you, you know, our, our meeting with my audience. Yeah. That's have your permission fine. to do that. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Where will that be shown? Um, well, I'm going to share it uh, through um, my Facebook, and then um, I'll give a link there. So I'll, I'll put it in there. It's a long, it's a long uh, discussion here, but it's the beginning of something wonderful. Okay. I'll Thank you. I'll go back and Thank check it out. Thank you for your permission. All right. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.